Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Keeping Up with FSL. I'm Tash Bani, your host for today. And for you guys at home who don't know, FSL is the premier female esports circuit here for girls all the way in Southeast Asia and Asia. And Keeping Up with FSL shows you the behind the scenes of what's going on. So anyways guys, you know what's going on? The VCT Game Changers APAC series. Yeah, that just ended, so I'm here to give you the goss about it. So for this Open 2, we had a total of 64 teams who registered. And after a total of two intense and grueling days, out of the 64 teams, only eight managed to make it out of the knockout stages. So if you guys are wondering why do these teams look so unfamiliar, I've never seen them before, it's because these teams actually got picked up by some organizations. And Bren Esports, they actually picked up the Capital Arise and now they're called the Bren Esports Victress. And after that as well, we have Zol Esports who have picked up Siomai and Friends Meraki, now known as Zol Meraki. So there's also another team here called Aresta and Gamdaing. I'm not sure if I said that right. Please tell me if I'm wrong. And these are Thai teams. And Orang Utan is actually a half South Asian and half Filipino team, which I think is really cool. Okay, I don't know if you guys remember, but back in open number one, Extend Crit and Bren Esports actually met. And they had such a really, really close series. And during that time, Extend Crit actually came up on top. And this time around, Bren Esports came out on top, thus they finished or completed their revenge arc before they finally met Team SMG over on the lower brackets. Their positions right here, just look at the quick replay. Beautiful crossfire from Mayumi and Iceberg, but look at this. A random snipe from Alexi and Shirazi is there for the back. And then after that, Bren Esports went up against SMG and this is where things got really, really close. Fortunately, they came up as the victors or the victresses before finally heading over to the grand finals to go up against AEC. Call for them. So let's see who's watching mid. I think Zinni's watching the blue main. That's gonna be the platform. Oh, so they'll get one the enemy as she takes down five. Baby TZ continues to walk up front. And right now, slowly trying to suss out the corners. Taps the spike, baiting the peak. Zinni hears the footsteps, almost eats a bullet through the wall. And thankfully avoids it. Recon Ball comes out and she finds her. Just plays around the timing of Wait. things. And there's the wall back! Oh my god, Zinni! Is gonna take the respective trades. Shirazi will have take down one. one. This is gonna be it. Not the two. Gonna be a three. And let's go! Despite all of that though, once again the girls of Alter Ego Celeste keep their places as queens of the Game Changers Apex series, coming in as champions. However though, I really gotta say that Bren Esports gave everyone a run off for their money because on that day itself, they took on three teams which were Zol Meraki, X10C as well as Team SMG. Honestly, I don't know what kind of food they eat because their stamina is phenomenal. If you guys actually haven't seen the full scoreboard, no worries because we'll show you guys later. But to sum it up, the top five teams were actually so close in terms of points. And this actually keeps AEC on their toes because if you guys don't know, they have been wearing the FSL Open Series crown for so long. And we want to see more competition, more bloodbath and more interesting matches. Honestly, this is really exciting for us because over an Open 3 coming soon, we're going to be expecting more exciting matches, more interesting matchups as well as strats too. Anyways guys, let's get a little bit more of some inside info from a player here over on the Open 2 itself from Team Zul Moraki. Let's invite Abby or Exekees, I hope I said that right, to find out what's going on. Hi Exekees! Hi Zash! Okay, so right now you are just done with everything. I just have a question for you. What's it like having a team that's just picked up by the organization? Is there a lot more pressure for you guys? Actually, it's a big pressure, but I'm really satisfied with the results. And since most of the new teams are getting into the playoffs, of course, we had to maintain our top four, or at least to qualify in the playoffs again. And I since see. we're just two months in together as a team, we really had to maintain the expectations of other people. Wait, you guys are only two months in, and you guys are already doing this good? Seriously? Um, In Open 1, we were actually less than two months in. What? You guys are insane! Okay, 
I, I need to know more about this. So since you guys are just so new, right? How did you guys decide to get together as an or uh, as a team and play? My teammates um, know each other from their previous teams in Valorant and CS:GO. Most of us were really looking for a team, including myself. Our team captain Capricious was offered by our previous organization, but she didn't have any teammates, so right. she just picked people and asked if we're down to make a team. And okay. we're lucky enough that the roles for each player fit in the team, and that's how Mariaki is made today. You guys are so new, and you guys—I mean, you guys obviously knew each other from before. How long did it take for you guys to figure out how exactly your personalities and game styles suited each other? Back in Open One, where Open One even started. I'd be honest. There's little to no chemistry at all. We had different types of gameplay. Some of us were passive and aggressive. However, we were really amazed when we saw the outcome of Open One. Our coach had a big help with us as well. So, how did you guys find your coach? How, how did that happen? Um, our coach was fr from our previous organization, and since we were left off without an organization, our coach managed to keep up with us. We stayed together in our new organization, Zol Esports. So, okay, so at least you guys had an, a coach from the beginning. So that's actually really, really nice. So now let's talk about your dynamic and your coaching right now. How's that going out for you? What kind of dynamic do you guys bring to the table? Because you did mention that some of you guys are aggressive, some of you guys are passive. And with the coach, how did that improve? Um, our coach was really a big help to us. We had to try different lineups, uh, roster changes. And of course, we had to try out different stats that were weird to us because we were only wanting to play out of our comfort. Uh, I wanted to play Astra, but I suddenly played Viper just because our coach wanted to. And of course, we wanted to improve and he was really a big help to us. So how hard was it to, you know, play out of your comfort zone, suddenly having to pick up a new agent? To play as a Viper, of course, there was a lot of stats that my coach wanted to play me since I had to try out lineups and of course Astra doesn't have any lineups I, all I have to do was put stars there and here but in Viper I had to put my wall in a different yeah. ways and of course my smokes and bees especially bees there was a lot of lineups in bees so would you say that Viper is not your favorite agent or are you still an Astra main after the open one I think Astra and Viper is still my comfort now Ah, uh, okay, so you have two agents in the bag, no mm -hmm. worries then. So, I think that's actually really good that you have an, uh, you know, a comfort zone to play against. So, because on different de maps, obviously, you want different agents. So now, let's talk a little bit as well about the Open in general. So, in your opinion, do you think that the games are a lot more manageable with the new format? I actually think the games are manageable. And aside from that, we were able to see more teams to compete with. And it wasn't like the previous Open one where most people were shocked about the group of death. Um, well, overall, the knockout stage was a good challenge since we had to encounter four teams before we qualified in the playoff. What was the hardest thing about this open for you? Uh, the nerf and the controllers and the buff in some agents. Since we had to fight more teams, we had to be more careful in, what, in how we execute our strats. How long did, uh, did it take your team to get, um, how do I say this, to to really, really learn or get used to the new updates? Uh, it only took us less than two weeks, actually. Um, since we're trying out new lineups as well, um, we're including more agents in our team mm -hmm. and now in our lineup. And of course, it was, it was different, but the outcome and results of the scrimmages are just absolutely amazing, regardless of the changes. Right. Well, you guys made it. Congratulations. Thank Top you. five for you guys, which I'm very, very happy to see, especially for a team as young as you guys. So now I have another question for you. So you actually tweeted out the other day um, about your journey into the Open, how you started off as an iron and in one year you, get, you got to this rank where you are to qualify for this tournament. And uh, my question to you is, is Valorant your first FPS? Ah, uh, yes, it is. I haven't really tried anything else. And you got this good in just one year. Can you can you share a bit? Because I'm struggling. I am mm -hmm. a silver player and I have no clue how to climb the rank like you. So what did you do? Were you solo queuing? Did you play with friends? How was it like? Um, all I could say is the path was a bumpy road for me. Coming from Iron Tree, I was the typical Aries god. I always looked on the floor and I was even too scared to play the Vandal. 
of course, I wouldn't be able to do it without without the help of my my friends and my previous teammates. So sometimes I would spend my time with my friends and ask them in a costume game, how would I pick this angle if I'm in this situation, or how will my movement be there and that. It's absolutely crazy that even my pro player friends are willing to go on a costume game with me. Your friends taught you how to do it, and you managed to just go all the way up. I am. This is insane, and. I just want to say that you are such an inspiration, especially for you know noobs like me, <laughs> because I've been trying to climb up for so long. So definitely, I think from what I took out of this, have good friends teaching you, and go into a custom to learn all these situations. Is that basically it? Um, of course, there will be practices and aim training. Um, if you really want to improve, you have to really grind solo or with a duo. Solo and duos. All right, I'm gonna remember that forever. Will we be seeing you guys in the next open? And what's your goal uh, during that time? Of course, you will be seeing us. You will be seeing more of Meraki in the next upcoming open. Our goal is to maintain our playoff qualification and playoff. Of course, we'd like to maintain top five, top four, and even better than that. Of course, we're not setting for just enough. All right, really excited to see that and see you guys go forward. Thank you so much, Exekeys, and hopefully we'll see you guys maybe in the top one. Mm -hmm. All right, bye bye. Bye. Okay, guys, that's the end for Open Two, but there's still so much more about to happen on Open Three. I'm expecting big plays, more teams, as well as more competition. I'm Tash Bunny, your host for today, and we'll see you guys in the next one.